Welcome to 10 Talks, real conversations for champions with champions, where a champion life is a 10 life. Thank you for joining our team today. I'm Carlette Patterson, your head sports life coach at the Life Training Academy, and it's our desired outcome to share our passion for sports life coaching by training you to live a 10 life. You and your life matter. Let's get coached. Hi, team. I am excited for you to meet our guest this week, Lori Corbelli. She is a legend volleyball player that just got inducted into the American Volleyball Coaches Association Hall of Fame. Let's hear a little bit about her story. She started playing volleyball at Texas Lutheran University. She was an Olympian in the 1980 Olympics, which got boycotted, went on to win a silver medal in the 1984 Games, head coach for the USA women's junior team in 2015 and 16, leading the team to a silver medal, assistant coach for the USA women's senior team at 2019 Pan Am Game Cups in Peru, winning a gold medal, assistant coach for USA women's senior team in 2019 Pan Am Games, head coaching positions at Santa Clara University in San Francisco, former head coach at Texas A&M. She was the winningest coach in A&M volleyball coaching history, 25 years as an A&M Aggie. She is a coach, a two-time Olympian, a silver medalist, and in 2019, inducted into the American Volleyball Coaches Hall of Fame. Team, welcome to meeting Lori Corbelli. Team, what an honor to be able to listen to Lori Corbelli really share her story and her passion and just feel that sense of competitive greatness that is still with her today, many years after the experience that she lived through. We were blessed to be able to create a 10 Talks with Lori Corbelli, and you can listen to that. And it was right before she was going to be inducted into the Volleyball Coaches Hall of Fame. So this is up to date, what's happening with the Olympics, and we wanted to bring Lori back and have her share that with us. And you can also tune in to really hear Lori Corbelli's story and hear the journey of her becoming an Olympian, her becoming a volleyball coach, her becoming an Olympic coach, and her being inducted into the Olympic Hall of Fame. So thank you, and make sure you're safe and healthy and give hope to all those around you. Hi team, we are with Lori Corbelli and we are here to talk about the Olympics and all that's happening in this crazy season that we have going on. First of all, before we dive into any of our conversation, we want to express great gratitude for all the people on the front lines taking great care of us. I mean, every person that is just doing everything they can to to make sure that we make it through this season of tremendous change and And we want to move into that change about the Olympics. So, Lori, I know that you were involved in the Olympics when they were boycotted. And we just want to hear your story and hear how you're giving hope to all the new Olympians that are really right back in the place where you were. So just take us back to your story. Tell us what it feels like when you train as long as you do for years and years, and then you get the announcement that many of our athletes now got today. Well, it's, it's a, I'll try to do the Reader's Digest version because there is a lot to, to include. However, I, I always enjoy talking about it because it, it was one of the biggest parts of my life that, that just, just gave me so much. And um, so our team, the USA women's volleyball team, got together. We didn't qualify. USA did not qualify in 76 for Montreal. And that was a really big disappointment because they had played in 72 or 68. I'm sorry, 68 was Tokyo, 72 was Munich. Did not play in Munich, did not play in Montreal. And so um, USA Volleyball decided they wanted to try and invest more into the women's program and come up with a group and a coach that could possibly qualify for the Moscow Olympics. And that happened to be, for me, a time of the end of my high school career and the beginning of my college career where I was having a lot of success and uh, got invited in 1978. So two years prior to the games, they decided to commit to USA Volleyball, decided let's do a full-time training center at the United States. We'll, We'll make this old Air Force base in Colorado Springs. We'll turn it into the Olympic Training Center and we'll have teams come and train here. Well, it was meant for temporary training to come and be just gr- get people from around the country to come and train for a few weeks. 
Well, our coach asked, can we train full time there and live there in the old barracks and use your old cafeteria and use your old gym? So, well, we, they didn't have a gym. They had an auto mechanic shop that we were, they, they eventually turned it into our gym, but we, they said, yes, you may come and train here full time. So in 78, January, we all moved there, 18 of us, and we started training every day. So Got Lori, it. how old were the 18 of you? What was the age range? And kind of take us through how does that okay. happen? Well, there was a, a national team already kind of training part-time in Pasadena that were maybe uh, 20 to 24 okay. years old. And some of them going to the University of Houston part-time, but training in Pasadena at an unair-conditioned, horrible gym. That was USA Women at the time. They didn't have any money. There was a junior team that was as good if not better than them that trained every night in Southern California and they met in a small tiny high school gym from 6 p.m. after all the stu high school students had left and the gym was available and they trained till about 11 at night so five hours 6 to 11 and then drove home and got home at about midnight and they were from all over Southern California and they were called the Adidas girls so the plan was let's join and they were they were high school girls so the Amer national team was a little bit older the junior team and I was kind of in between I was a young college player along with Rita Crockett a young college player from Houston so that those two groups merged to to go to Colorado Springs together and Rita and I were the two invitees wow. come and join these two teams and we're gonna train and we'll start you know there was probably 20 of us total maybe 22 and then it started, people started dropping off like flies after they saw the amount of, because now you're full time, you're not in school, you don't have a job, you're, you've given up everything to go and train. And so some of the girls were like, I'm not doing this. And they took off after the first couple of, I don't know, weeks, some of them. So Lori, so, did you stop going to college and stop everything and move to the mm -hmm. training center? And that was your full-time job was training for the Olympics. Yes, we made, um, I made $60 every two weeks okay. is the check I got. And maybe it was cash, I don't recall. But I was, um, so I was, I turned 21 in 78, right after we got there. It was my 21st birthday. And so that's, I was kind of in the middle, like I said. So we were there for all of 78 with about five international trips in there. We took trips to Japan, Korea, Russia, Belgium, and played against their national teams to kind of incorporate not only training full time, but you got to compete too. You got to see where you stand. So we would do two week trips in other countries and play against their national teams in different cities around their country. Um, and and so 78 and 79 we did that for so those two years and we were the only team that lived there full time often other sports would come through for two th weeks three weeks and they would train as well and we'd get to meet them and that was really fun for us because we were like oh other people are doing something like this but we're not the only ones in the world doing this but we started to get better and better and every time we would compete against the russians who were ranked number one in the world or against the cubans uh, who were world champions um, just just from different competitions we started to compete against them better and better and better to where we were becoming ranked in the top three in the world with russia and cuba and usa there was still china and japan and korea that were all very competitive but we were we were seeing that we had a really nice blend of kind of the eastern Amer eastern european style and we had size like the the Russians, but we also had defense like the Japanese. That was one of our coaches' favorite things to do was go to Japan and train defense. So we were blending kind of different parts of the world styles of volleyball. Well, we got to go home for this 1979 Christmas. We didn't get to go home in 78 because he thought it was, it was too important to stay together. But we all petitioned him and said, we need a break in 79 before we take that push for 80. And at this point, there was no, no, no news of any boycott or anything. We just were expecting to go play in Moscow in July of 1980. And we, we petitioned for a day and a half. We got off of practice and we sat in a meeting, team meeting that literally lasted a day and a half. And he kept saying no, and we kept saying yes. And so he, he decided to let us have a break. 
So this was very, mon it was monumental because it was my first break from this team training for two years. So all of 78 and all of 79. Every day? Except for Sunday. Okay. <coughs> but he called that two days off in his eyes. That's because we'd finish on a Saturday night, but we wouldn't start again till Monday, you know, morning. So that was practically two days. Okay. That's how we counted it. So anyway, we got off for Christmas uh, about two weeks in 79. And on our trip back to Colorado Springs to join in 1980, the new year happened. It's January the 2nd, maybe the 4th. And there's this word that President Carter has mentioned something about. Well, we might not send a team then, you know, we might not. And I'm, we're, my dad's like, Laurie, did you hear that? You know, we're the family and still with my family. And anyway, Everybody returns to this training center and we get told, look, we're going to train as if everything's going to go forward. We, we are going to play in the Olympics. This is our head coach speaking. I don't care if they pull it out from under USA. We'll go and move to the Fiji Islands, Fuji yeah. Islands, whatever you call them. I don't even know. <laughs> and we will represent someone, but we are not stopping training. We've gone too far and we are going to compete. Well, we're his little followers. We're just, we're at his mercy. Like this guy was, we are doing this, damn it, you know. So we stayed at the training center and we train every day, hearing more and more about a possible boycott and hearing every day more and more on Good Morning America that this athlete decided to stop training. This athlete decided to stop training. Uh, one of our team captain went to Good Morning America for an interview with Joan London and said, we are still training. We think this is, we're going to go, you know, as insane as it might've sounded, we, it was not a final no yet. Yeah. And we went downtown Denver. We got, he let us off for an afternoon training session for us to drive to Denver an hour and a half away and pick it on the corners of, you know, Market Street and Broadway saying, we want to go, we want to go. And we had people driving by in their cars, like, you're not being American. You're, you know, a lot of people not appreciative of our picketing, but we felt like we were being the scapegoats. Like, oh, let's pick the Olympic team and have it pulled out from under them to, to show Russia we don't think that they should be invading Afghanistan. Well, why pick us? You know, you know, I mean, we, we were dumbfounded that this was happening. It wasn't until April 24th of 1980 that we knew that that was the day President Carter said he would be making his final decision and announcing it at noon. And we were on a trip with the East Germans who were ranked about fifth in the world. They were in America. We were flying that day to San Antonio to play a match against them that night. And I'm a Texan and I knew my family would be at the airport waiting to say hello. And when we got off the plane, it was past noon. We had not, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have, we get off the plane not knowing that the final, we all, although we certainly had a feeling. And I saw my sisters and my family standing there crying when we got into the terminal. And that makes they want to cry. I mean, I just got goosebumps all over listening to this and just feeling the agony. Oh my gosh. This is brutal. I mean, our team broke down. We, we all saw my family and a couple of other Texans on the team's family. And it was, it was, absolutely devastating and uh they didn't have to say anything we could see on their faces um we still had to play that night in this in this uh match that we'll never forget we had to sing the anthem about what five hours later we had to have our hand on our heart at the end of the at the end of the court and the east germans they were going to go they're they're fully communist and all behind russia and so here we are and we were, we, I'll never forget that in line, just crying so hard. We were bawling and we had to still play. We got beat 3-0 within an hour. We didn't even want to play. And so, and that was a team we always beat. But obviously that's just a, we finished that tour and our coach, um, he realized then that we weren't going to represent any other little bitty tiny island country that we were really not going to get to go. And um, seven of our players then were older than me. And they all decided they were done with their careers. They just couldn't do another four years like that. However, because I was kind of middle. So, Lori, you were 23 at this point? 
I was 23. You there on your 21st birthday, and then it's been two exactly. years, so you're 23. You've 23. been living off of $60 every two weeks, mm -hmm. training around the clock, getting Sunday off, and mm -hmm. this happens, and so it's time now to make another commitment for four more years. It's right. pretty much or, exactly or, the same thing, right? Right. However, the only, the caveat is Los Angeles is going to host. Okay. And so my brain is saying, heck no, we're not going to boycott Los Angeles, are we? You know, no way we're going to boycott our own Olympics. Although you never know what else could happen. We just, you can't even imagine. I mean, look what we're going through right now. I mean, it's exactly, yes. You just can't never, even imagine. It's, it's incredible. And so knowing that we weren't boycott, which was in my mind the biggest barrier to not achieving this big goal of mine, and knowing I was only 23 and um, that I either go back and finish my degree now and then find a job, or I'm still uh, competitive and probably young competitively internationally, I need to decide if I'm going to do this anymore or not. And I decided to, to do it. And so uh, the teammates that that did retire are, are still very, very sad about it and very bitter. I'm, I'm still sad about it, but I did get to go on and do it again. I, I got to go into 84. And that was some kind of a, I mean, at least I got, I got to compete in an Olympic Games. Yeah. These guys, some of the best in the world that retired because their bodies were broken down, their brain, you know, they would have loved to have done it, but, but too difficult for their, their, their age and, and the kind of training we were doing. And so that, that group is, has really, really struggled to be honest, to this day. Yeah. Well, it's a loss that can't be replaced. And so, you know, I mean, from a competitive spirit perspective and an athlete, the champion, you know, that heart of a champion, like when you take everything that you, you've just devoted your entire life to and your identity, your, you know, it is everything about who you are. So, so Lori, tell us about what your team is doing to really support this next gen of athletes that are going through very much the same thing you went through. Well, it's it's interesting. We we this AD team is probably the closest team I've ever been a part of. I've been a part of volleyball teams for 35, 40 years, and we are still super close friends. We have tons of respect for each other. We do a, a lot of reunions. And we had a reunion at the Olympic Training Center actually in November. And we just rekindled our friendship. We had, the stories have obviously, you know, changed a little bit depending on which person you are and how you saw it, which, but it's, you can't get enough of it. It's like our souls were just so full after three days and we wanted more. But we all decided, you know, let's, let's see how things go and let's, let's be sure and support the 2020 group. And I was fortunate enough last summer to get to work with this, that particular team in 2019, a year before the games. So I, I was familiar with faces and names, so I was like, I really want to be there to support however I can. Well, our captain uh, wrote us um, last week and said, you know, I wrote, I put together this little note for the 2020 girls now that they are talking about postponing or canceling, and I wanted to see if you guys wanted to send it from our team, or do each one of you want to write something, or how do you guys want to do it? So after a little small discussion, we all agreed to send a a blanket statement from our team to their team. And we, um, so we sent it to Jordan Larson, their captain, and she is sharing it with the rest of the girls. Um, just about how, um, how important it is to stay together, talk a lot about what you've been through, how you're making it through now, what you, your goals still are, just staying together as teammates and as competitors. Um, and, and to remember, I mean, that we were available if they wanted to call and just chat, even though, you know, part of me is thinking they're probably going to get postponed. So there's still a chance they get to compete in that arena. Um, and, and one more year is a lot different than four more years, you know, in my mind. However, it's still getting pulled out right out from underneath them. And all of the plans that they've made for the last four years for these 2020 games coming up in, what, five months, four months. But now I know that they're 
we've just made ourselves available. We've made, um, we, we are just sending notes of, of good luck and, and hang in there and, and, you know, perseverance and, um, and just positivity. So Lori, what do you say for the support team, for all the people that, you know, like your parents and sisters who were there to greet you at the airport with, you know, devastating hearts because family and support team are so much on this journey as much as the athlete. I mean, it's such a team effort from a family and friends perspective. So what advice or words of wisdom would you give the support team to help this athlete make it through a time that they have no control over, right? They literally have to to really honor our country in terms of we're doing this for such, you know, something so much bigger than ourselves. All of us are in lockdown. Everybody's making changes to their lives. So what would you say for the support team? What are your words of wisdom? Well, I recall the faces and the tears on my sister's eyes and, and my family's and know how important it was to them as well. And how much, how every time I would call home, saying, I don't know if I can keep doing this. They were the ones to say, you know, don't make an emotional decision. Call us in a couple of days and let's talk about it. That kind of support, I would never have been able to achieve what I did or made it through at all without the support team. And so never, never diminish what you, the impact you think you might be making because as a supporter for, in whatever realm you are, it's, it's, um, I mean, now these athletes, because this this is going to be postponed, your life is really different after sports, and you and now it's being thrown upon a lot of them just out of nowhere. They really need support at this point in time more than ever, and as much as they may not realize it, it's it's critical. I think that they have the people that have been there all along just lean on them, having be someone that they can lean on, be someone that, that can remind them of what they did and how they did it and how important it was. And that it, there's things that are out of your control sometimes that you just have to continue to believe and have faith and, and go forward and that things are going to be okay. But man, without a support team, it's, it's impossible to achieve. So Lori, I hear that most importantly from a support team, it's just so important that we're giving hope, words of encouragement, certainly staying away from any of the negatives, staying away from you know the things that we can't control. Tell us about from really the heart of a champion, which you are, and we you know love being on this life journey with you from you know, hearing about the Olympics to you being a volleyball coach and just you know the journey that you've been on. I'm sure you're right back in that moment now as you're hearing all of these things. Tell us about from the heart of a champion, what does your heart feel like when this is happening? Wow, what does my heart feel like? Well, I, I, I don't know the exact word to describe it because um, I always get very emotional when I talk about my experience with the training and my teammates, especially, and my coach and, and walking in the opening ceremonies of an Olympic games, just, it all is just emotion 101, you know, just the very, it's like the big, it, it just, it's as raw as it can get, yeah, it's it yeah. raw and intense. Oh, super intense. And so, you know, when I was reading it earlier last week, maybe they'll be postponed. Maybe then I read a, a country's going to drop out. Well, that to me signaled then nobody, they don't really want to run it unless everyone's going to be. I mean, that's, that's what I learned from the boycott is it, it looked like it had a, a voice felt like it had a little bit of a black mark on it, an asterisk by silver medal, but Russia didn't go, you know, or something like that. So I just had this feeling that when the team started to drop out, that it was going to be postponed. And um, it makes me really sad because number one, selfishly, I couldn't, I have it on my calendar, like opening ceremonies. I was, I started a savings for, to go to the Olympics in Tokyo and be there, trying to be there. And then I changed my mind with, with just different things going on. But I was just like most people, so excited to watch it and be a part of it. And I know the team after working with them last summer, I, I was just, oh, this is, this awful. This is, this isn't going to happen. And then, you know, how much each day has brought us such new news of this 
virus that it, it just it just breaks my heart for them. I know they're devastated. I'm, uh, one of their coaches sent out videos today of them, several about 10 of them saying what they're doing without a ball and without teammates around them, how they're staying in shape and ready to go if, if called on. That brought back a lot of memories. Um, although we were still allowed to be together and allowed to train, um, luckily they're by themselves right now. They're not allowed to be in the gym together and train. So it must feel really lonely. They must feel really helpless and that part's really sad it's it's unfortunate i think um yeah i mean those are the i'm sure a lot of people are feeling that way right now just the, our lives have all been turned upside down but there's in a in a really different and special way so lori as an olympian that is really speaking into this story that we're all living through how do you want to give hope to all the athletes that have the ability to listen to this or to hear about this, just what would you like to say to them? I would say, you know, cherish every training session, cherish every interaction with a teammate and with a coach, cherish every moment that you get a chance to even be on the journey because you just really never know what tomorrow will bring. It's a perfect example of that kind of, colloquialism I guess you know is you must be enjoying the journey you have to you have to give everything you have every single day that's asked of you and asked from your teammates because if you don't get to do what the ultimate goal was you still have to look back and know that you got so much out of it and it was exactly what you needed to do for your life for their lives and and um just for your own self-respect and so i i don't know just enjoy every day as hard as that is as an especially an athlete going through the training that you go through especially to that degree it's critical that you that you just take it one day at a time well, team, that is spoken from the heart of an athlete and the heart of a champion. And our hearts go out to everyone as we are going through this season of transformational change. And Lori, the words that you shared with us, they can go for all of us. I mean, everything that you said about enjoying the journey, just really valuing and, and just taking in every moment of every day. None of us could have ever seen something like this coming. Every person is training for their life as an Olympian in terms of, you know, going for their dreams and for that little person that's going for their dreams and they're missing school to that, you know, the grandma and grandpa that can't see their kids and their grandkids, you know, we want to give hope. We want to share our passion and our love for everybody that's out there. And Lori, thank you so much for giving hope to not only our athletes, but just to every one of us and sharing your heart. Well, thank you. I enjoyed every second of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. We'd like to get you coached up. So head over to iTunes and Spotify and hit subscribe. And remember, a champion life is a 10 life. You and your life matter. Create a life that you love. Give hope to others and be and choose nothing but 10s. Be you. The world needs you. Go to lifetrainingacademy.com to start your training and get coached.